Hey everyone, this is a little combo video for you two. This package arrived today, and this is for my future project of the Hammerland HQ129X. Put my order into Just Radios. Who I like to deal with, they're in uh, Canada, and uh, they carry all kinds of capacitors and resistors and a few other th odds and ends for radio restoration. And the uh, nice thing about it is it's just a little mom and pop, literally, husband and wife that run the company. And... Uh, I like to buy from these little companies. If I don't buy them from Radio Days, I get them, or from Just Radios, I get them from Radio Days or Mark Opat or Opat. Uh, and I can't think of his website right now, but I'll put it up. And I'm going to have to stop and cut this open because I can't cut it open one handed. It's all taped. Okay, sorry about that. What we have here is, is some spaghetti tubing, which I like to put on my uh, ends when I'm soldering are all the caps needed for a recap of the 129X. Here's my safety caps for across the line, actually line to ground. They're not across the line. My electrolytics, and there's four of them. Three tens and a 25, which is a tiny one. I wasn't sure if I'd be able to restuff. There's a can in the bottom of that, which I is probably on, at least in one shot on the other video. They might fit. I'm going to try to fit them. If I can't, I'm going to just do a uh, do a bar on the bottom. Oh, there's Chloe the cat. She's going out to sit in the window. What I did buy, though, which is different, is instead of the yellow ones, I bought the high-quality uh, audio caps from Just Radios for two reasons. One, they're better quality. Two, they're dark, and I think they'll look better on the, on the radio. And I wanted to spend the extra on this particular radio because this is going to be my main listening radio, and uh, I'm also going to try to get a transmitter to use it, AM, CW transmitter. But these, I thought, will look better under there. I'm not going to be restuffing because I don't have the original paper caps. So there they are, the all the caps necessary for that radio. And I'll be getting going on that in two weeks. So I'm going to Hawaii next week for my 25th wedding anniversary for, with my wife. And then when we get back, I have another extra week of vacation. And that's when I'm going to be recapping. I'm not going to do a total restoration uh, series. I'm just going to do a few updates here and there until it's done and hopefully up to the working point. The one thing I have decided on, I do have to buy some tubes, about four of them. And instead of buying a replacement rectifier uh, glass tube, I'm going to buy a copper uh, solid state one. Uh, I read some things online that that will keep your transformer cooler on this particular radio, and they will uh, keep the whole radio cooler. And it, it'll keep it more uh, stable, too, once it's uh, warmed up. Uh, it won't drift as much if, if it's not as warm, hopefully. So... That's what I'm going to try on that, and that'll I'll put all that in an upcoming video. So that's it for this little uh, unboxing. I have one more package I'm going to open, and I'm going to show you one little item that's a kind of a bonus item. Be right back. Okay, here we are back again, and uh, this is what I'm going to call overkill. I know what's in this, and I was pretty shocked that it was in a box. Didn't need to be in a box, and you'll see why in a minute. This guy spent more on shipping probably than he needed to. I don't know. I don't think I paid much for shipping on this. It was an eBay thing. And that's it. It's a paper owner's manual. And as you can see, <laughs> This box was overkill. It could have been put in an envelope. I don't know why he didn't put it in an envelope. Anyhow, 
looks like I'm going to have to pause and open this because it's wrapped pretty tight. Be right back. Well, that eBay seller is going to get five stars for feedback, for packing. What this is is an original manual for the Heathkit Model 08 oscilloscope. And uh, it includes the assembly. It's everything. This is a nice manual. That's the nice thing about buying a Heath kit, anything. It, uh, original check marks from when the person put it together. Very detailed instructions. And to me, that's what makes any kit. If, if you have good instructions, you know, the components are fine, one thing, but if you don't have good instructions to put it together, uh, it's a problem. Heath kit was known for their instruction books. And this is excellent. So why did I get the manual? Because I have the oscilloscope. The uh, oh, and speaking of instructions, I just finished building this, and I just want to give a little shout out to Vectronics. This is an AM transmitter. It's a VEC uh, 1290 uh, AM transmitter by Vectronics. I don't have it up to an audio source to do right now, but it does work, and it works well transmit to my AM radios uh, throughout the house. And I would recommend that kit. It was about 58 bucks for everything, for the circuit board and the separate case that came with it. And the instructions by Vectronics on that were probably one of the best I've ever used putting a kit together. Very detailed, very good instructions, <clears throat> which makes a kit good. This uh, was a bonus item when I got the uh, Hammerland HQ uh, 129X. The guy said, yeah, I got more electronic stuff out in the shed. you want to look? And I went out there with him, and he had this uh, sitting on the floor of his shed. And it's the uh, Heathkit Model 08 uh, oscilloscope. It's a bit dirty and dusty from sitting in a shed and sitting wherever else it was before that. He was kind of a picker guy that just bought stuff from estates. I don't know where it came from. It's got all the original caps. I uh, haven't tested any of the tubes in this yet. It looks pretty good though. I mean, it's dusty and dirty, but it's it's complete. Complete, and it has uh, the, all the original caps, so it's probably been untouched since it was built, as far as I can tell looking through it. So I'm going to try to recap that and get that going, and that'll be in another uh, future video. And hopefully if this thing works, I'm hoping it will, uh, when I get to the point of aligning the HQ-129X, I'll actually use the uh, oscilloscope to help do that. At least that's the plan. So that's it. Uh, I think I'll uh, sign off here, and uh, thanks for watching. Hey guys, I thought I'd give you a little update on the uh, Hammerland. The uh, caps are going in. We have uh, this whole corner, really this whole end of the radio recapped. There's one blue one hiding down there. One up here on the band switch. And then the rest of them are all down at that end. And those will be easy. They're all out, out, out in the open. This corner was the most difficult one. A lot of these were buried. There's a uh, some way down in here, down in here. Uh, the safety cap we got up in there that goes from uh, the on off switch down to ground. I did uh, look at this can, thought about recapping it, but it would be difficult to get this open cleanly. I could cut it and tape it and all that kind of stuff, but it's not very large. Uh, it would have been tight getting all the new caps in it. So I elected to just unscrew it and put a terminal switch in, terminal strip rather, and I have the electrolytics all on the side, which is kind of keeping with the radio design anyway, because this radio has uh, a fair amount of terminal strips in it already from the original design up here and here. They used them as tie points. They, the cabling goes all the way around, very neat, and ties into these strips that are all around the edges of it anyway, as it is. So they thought that kind of fits in with it. It doesn't look too bad. And as I said, these black caps 
film caps from uh, just radios blend in very nicely instead of the yellow ones that stand out so much. Uh, they're supposedly audiophile caps. They're about double the price of the yellow ones. But for this particular radio, I was willing to spend a little more uh, to get it going. I did just order from uh, Weber Speakers a copper solid state rectifier tube. I did read a couple things on that on uh, the antique radio form. This, the rectifier in this radio is right next to the um, transformer. Actually, let me get a, see if I can get a shot of it. And it gets quite warm. Transformers here and then there's a smaller can here and that corner tube is the rectifier tube and it sits right next to the transformer and it warms up this and uh, what they said on this uh, antique radio form thread is using those solid state copper ones number one it does not use filament voltage so it does not draw your 5 volts filament voltage from the transformer so that makes the transformer run cooler and then additionally you don't have the hot tube sitting right next to the transformer so the whole radio runs cooler and the benefit of that is you get um, less drift uh, on the radio if it's running cooler so it it's a good benefit all the way around I'm just going to set that down gently so that's what I'm going to go with uh, for the rectifier my rectifier tube is quite weak anyway I tested all the tubes about a half the tubes in this radio are weak uh, and bad really uh, I was surprised and one I think I mentioned it one tube was the wrong tube so I have to get the rest of the tubes ordered up that I'm going to need and finish recapping and uh, it's going along pretty quick actually I was surprised how much I got done tonight uh, because it's challenging to get into those nooks and crannies where these capacitors are hiding well, I thought I'd just give you a little update there. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Oh, I know what I was going to mention. There was something else. <laughs> I mentioned in my first look at this thing there were dog bones in here, and I thought, that's odd. Well, it is odd. They're not original. It turns out, you know, the original ones are all, all these carbon comp ones that are all through it. Whoever had the radio did a repair, and they, they must have had these laying around. It's taped in right here by my finger that's electrical tape and these are in parallel here so they were trying to make a resistor that would be the right voltage here right resistance rather um, to replace one that must have been here prior uh, so I'm gonna have to scope that out figure out what's supposed to be here for sure and re get these two dog bones out of there uh, they're older than the radio I'm sure probably you know they're from the 30s this radio is from the 40s and Whoever had the radio uh, must have had him in his junk box. He, the other thing I was going to comment, I thought I'd mention, is you know whoever recapped this in 1968, and these I think I mentioned that these are, have a 1968 date code on these caps. They did an incredible job. They, every one of these is soldered in to its original point. There's no old pieces of caps in there. They're not pigtailed, and I'm pigtailing most of mine. Um, but this thing's been meticulously recapped when it was done. They did a really good job. It's uh, I was quite impressed. Anyhow, I guess that's the update, and uh, I'll make some more uh, updates as uh, we get moving along here on this project. Thanks for watching. Just going to continue with a short little update. The well, last one I told you we finished all the caps up on this end. Now we're working on the other end. All the capacitors are done on these terminal strips. I've pulled all the capacitors off this terminal strip. I've replaced one so far back there. What I'm putting in here are these nice little black uh, audiophile grade caps from Just Radios, as I mentioned before. And for each of these terminal strips, I'm making a little chart so I don't make a mistake <coughs> in putting them back. And I did that with the other one, too. And then I thought I'd also include uh, this little unboxing. This came today. And it's related to this radio. And what we have here... 
Oh, he wrapped it really well. Oh my goodness, an envelope and an envelope. Just a minute. I hope this will focus. This is the original manual for the Hammerland HQ129X. Amateur radio Amateur Communications Receiver. Hammerland Manufacturing Company, Inc. New York, New York, 34th Street. <clears throat> and the back. The Sign of Quality, established in 1910. What I'm going to do with this manual, obviously put it with my radio, I'm going to scan it, and I'm going to upload it to BAMA. And if you're familiar with BAMA, it's the Boat Anchors Manual Archive. There is a copy on there now. I have printed that. I have it put away. It's not the greatest copy. Uh, now, I was looking at the news page on this. It says, check out the latest news. And this is August 11th, 2012, two years ago. There's been many updates over the last few weeks. These are the new manuals, and this is what he uploaded. There's been no new manuals added since 2012. Now, I don't know if that's because nobody's sending them to him, or if he just hasn't uploaded any. Uh, so I'm going to scan it. I'm going to send him a copy. I can't tell you how long it's going to take him to get it on here. It does tell you how to submit one to them right here, submitting a manual. So if you're in need of a better copy of the original manual for the HQ129X, uh, I'm going to scan this and get it up there in the next few weeks, but I can't promise how long it's going to take the guy that owns the Bama website to get it up there because it looks like it hasn't been updated in quite some time. Okay, I'm running short on time on my camera and video, so uh, I'll come back uh, a little later and give you the rest of the update when the rest of these caps are done. i got about 10 left to go or so. This is Tom. Hello again. Well, we finished the recapping. You notice one glaring yellow cap. I came up short one. Luckily, I had a yellow one. And this resistor was the dog bones. What I discovered on those, these are uh, equal to 4.7 K. Since they're in parallel, you half it. And they are 2.35 K. They ohmed out to 2.5. Resistor number 170 in the schematic calls for a 2200 ohm. So this is a 2.2 that I put in this place, even though this was probably would have been fine because it was 2.5 it came out as. Uh, I replaced it. That looked neater. Uh, I will eventually, when I order a new set of caps for in the future from Just Radios, get a black one to match up the rest. I, they look so much nicer. And one little thing that I'm going to do a little video on. I don't know if you're going to be able to see it. I found a capacitor to nowhere. It's got solder on the end, so it was connected to something at one time. It's a mica cap. It's down in the bottom. The other end of it goes to, through that hole, into the large tuning capacitor. A lot of caps go to ground. Maybe it went to ground. It's not touching anything. It was soldered at one time because you can see solder on the bottom tip of it. I'm going to have to figure that one out. And uh, that's it. All, everything else is recapped. When I get back from vacation to Hawaii, I will have uh, the new tubes. And uh, maybe I'll figure out by then what that capacitor is. I might post that to the Antique Radio Forum. So there you have it. This is Tom.